away from that trade deadline. Woj, thank you so much. We're going to see you back in just a minute to dive into the Karis Levert trade. But I do want to stick with James Harden here because when I was reading this piece from Adrian Wojnarowski and Ramona Shelburne, the thing that stood out to me the most in their reporting was that James Harden and his manager, they are looking for an agent to partner with, they reported. And the last time he did that, that was when he was navigating leaving Houston and he worked with Wasserman. So, Richard, do you see the Nets and Harden having a long-term partnership here? I, I do. I, I, I think so. I, I think, obviously, with everything that's going on, I think the Kyrie situation, uh, Kevin Durant's injury, there's just been a lot. This has been an unusual year. And, and then going into free agency, we've seen that happen with a ton of players, even marquee players. We were talking about it with Giannis. You know, all these marquee players, when their name comes up, they're going to be mentioned everywhere. And so I'm not surprised that the Nets are like, dude, no, James is our guy. We're not going to. Because even if you have a conversation, then all of a sudden it seems like you're looking for something to do with James. So you're like, no, that's a non-starter. So I think Brooklyn is 100% committed to, 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 uh, to James. And it's just a matter of if James is going to be committed to them in this offseason. Well, that's a big matter if James yeah. is going to be committed to them in this offseason. He didn't sign an extension. It's not a great sign that uh, Daryl Morey is calling about James Harden because he wouldn't call if he didn't think he had a shot. It's not a great sign that in the Woj and Ramona story, they say things like, well, the Nets are taking James at his word that his hamstring injury is a real injury and this and that. Like, that's not a great sign either. That said, there's just such a soap opera in Brooklyn. When those three play together, they are awesome and they fit well. So if I'm the Nets, I think, look, Kevin Durant's come back after All-Star. Kyrie will see if he can play home games or not. Like, we hope it takes care of itself. But long term, it's never, ever been as murky to me as it is right now. And you pointed out something really important, Malika. The last time the agency came up, when it came to his deal in Houston, trying to leave, like, people might say, oh, he must try to leave now, too, because he's looking for agents. That's not necessary, you know, uh, the case at all times, meaning... Maybe he just wants to make sure that this next deal is the best deal for him, not necessarily meaning, hey, I'm trying to leave. I think at the bare minimum, the Nets know that they're better with James Harden playing basketball for him than potentially risking, piss well, I don't know, I was going, making him mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> making him mad so much that now he's gone and you're not guaranteed another star to pair with making Kyrie, who mad. may or may what, not be what, what available in KD. Why shopping him, basically shopping him. That's what he's saying. If you shop a guy and you even have that conversation, it's then all of a sudden you're like, well, why are you even talking about it if you're that committed? Well, and I sat down with James Harden at the beginning of the season, and he said to me, look, I've never tested free agency before. That's something that's interesting. But he also said winning cures everything. But those are at polar opposites for the Brooklyn Nets right now because they ended 2021. They were at the top of the East. And then, remember Kevin Durant, he got hurt in January. They were the second seed then. But now, after an eight-game losing streak, they've fallen all the way to seventh place, and that would put them in the play-in tournament. So, Richard, you cover the Nets locally. What's the likelihood that they're going to end up in the play-in? I think extremely low. Uh, to me, I think getting Kyrie back, there's obviously an adjustment period. James Harden also missed time over this stretch. They've been on the road this entire time. And then Kevin Durant, maybe the guy that at the time of his injury was probably the leading candidate. I think Joel Embiid has probably surpassed him. But K KD was leading the league in scoring, was doing everything that you can imagine a player can do in the fourth quarter, was balling. And now all of a sudden he's out, they're on the road, things are going tough, and now they've had, had a little bit of a losing streak. I just think that the Nets will be in that 4-5 spot if they can get going, and I think that they don't fear anyone if they're at 100% health. And, and let's be real, this is right now the worst of the worst case scenarios for the Brooklyn Nets because, you know, if you're trying to find bright spots, Kyrie at least has been pretty consistent in putting up numbers, even if he's taking a lot of shots. Blake Griffin getting back to what we see, those double-double type of efforts, and Patty Mills. I mean, you can't say enough good things Raising about balling. Patty Mills. And so you hope that James's hamstring is better, and then KD comes back after All-Star. Kyrie is, you know, finding some synergy. Fingers crossed that maybe there's an availability come down the stretch of the season. You never know. Um, but right now, I think it's raining. It's really pouring in Brooklyn. But the reality is they could really turn this around so much so that they could be in a top four state. Well, and we're having this conversation, right, because Steve Nash said there's a high probability that we're going to be in a play-in spot when we are going into the All-Star break. That's where this is spurring from, Zach. Uh, they're in the play-in spot right now. Right. There's a high probability right now with 100% probability. <laughs> they're in the play-in spot. I admire your, your guys' optimism because I think this is closer to 50-50 than you guys are saying it is. First of all, the math sites, the projection sites, has it as better than 50-50 that they're in the play-in. 
And look, they're three games out in the loss column now of four and five. Like, they're not that close to four and five. Toronto is one game ahead of them in six. Toronto is going to try to upgrade at the trade deadline. They're not going anywhere. Boston's not going anywhere. Look, recent evidence suggests they can't beat anybody with one of the three available. They're struggling to beat anybody with two of the three available when the one that's not available is Kevin Durant. Still, if I had to predict, I predict they get out of the play and into the top six just because Durant is going to come back soon. Right. That would, in, in, in my view, that would inspire James Harden to say, okay, our team's getting back together. Let me amp up my effort. And it's just hard to see that team not making the top six. But it's going to be tight. They have too much talent. It's really hard to see them falling out of the top Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.